Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an external interrupt using a standard push button switch. An external interrupt is where you use a pin of the microcontroller as an input and you provide a signal to that pin and the microcontroller will handle the interrupt by going to a special function where you can add code when this interrupt is fired. This is an alternative to the polling method of testing the input on a pin within the while loop, the never ending loop. The pin that will be used for input is pin number 50. Pin number 50 is port A, pin number 15. The switch in this case is pulled to ground using a 220K resistor. I added a small res resistor here, which is only 330 ohms, just to add a little bit of resistance. And when the button is pressed, the pin will receive a high reading, which is on the plus rail. So when the button is pressed, it will go to this positive rail. When the button is not pressed, it'll go right through to the minus rail, which is pulled down to ground. When the button is pressed, it will increase. And you'll notice that it increases quite a bit on each button press, and that's because the button bounces. And the interrupt is extremely sensitive, and we are configuring the interrupt to increment a variable for every rising edge. So this particular type of experiment would be better on a non-mechanical clean signal coming in. You can eliminate the bounce in the interrupt, but that will not be the subject of this particular tutorial. The circuit is actually the same as the previous push button videos. We're gonna add a resistor to that pin pulled down to ground, so the pin is not floating. When the button is pressed, it will connect to the high side or the plus rail. Okay, let's start coding. Let's create a new project. We're gonna use the STM32F030R8T6. New project. I'm going to call this one External Interrupt Button Press. Click Finish. I need to add the STM32F030 kubelib file, the library. And that also includes the CMSIS core. And we are going to be using the LCD, so we need the C library to show in to show integers from strings. Let's add that the C library. Now we can go ahead and remove the repository. We have the main.c, so we can double click that one. We don't need the welcome anymore. We have our skeleton code. Okay, now let's go ahead and Build it to see if it works. Okay. So we're ready to start coding. The first thing I'm gonna do is just include my standard include files. And I'm gonna include the LCD functions. In fact, we don't have the LCD functions in there yet. So let me add it. Let's add the file from the LCD tutorial. All right, so we're ready to include that one. And we want to set up the port A, pin 15, as input. So let's go ahead and do that first. And this is stuff that we've already learned how to do. If you need help with that, just go to the NewbieHack website and go to the ARM tutorials. And I explain how to set up the push button input using the GPIO, general purpose input output. So if you want more explanation on how to set up the input and, and why I'm using specific registers and setting the registers in the way that I am, go ahead and watch number 10 and number 11 of the how to receive push button input on the ARM microcontroller. I'm going to use the reset clock and control register and the advanced high performance bus GPO, GPIO A enable. Now we're going to change the mode register for the GPIO 
A to serve as input. And we want pin number 15. And we also want to set no pull up, pull down, since we're doing that externally anyway. At this point, we might as well set up the LCD. And in the beginning of this, I'm going to put a not exact time delay, and I'm just going to put maybe 10,000 in here. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a very short time delay before the, H, uh, the LCD initializes. I've noticed when I plug in the circuit for the first time, the LCD is not really ready until a little bit after the microcontroller sends this initialization code. So I'm going to add just a little bit of time delay, give it some time to give the LCD some time to, um, to get ready. I'll set up the display. And I think I want to add some information to the display. And I'm going to call it just A15 since we're it's a description of port A and pin number 15. In the second line, I'm not going to put anything. Let's stub out the interrupt function first, just so we can... Actually, let me do the NVIC first. The nested vector interrupt controller. And we're going to enable an IRQ, which is going to be the external interrupt. And we have some choices here. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 through 15. And because we're accessing the pin number 15, we're going to be using this particular interrupt. And now we need to set up the priority for the same external interrupt designation and we're going to set priority to, to be zero. What I've read is the priority you have the option of going from zero to three and three being the lowest priority, zero being the highest priority. I'm not sure if that is actually correct but I'm going to assume that is correct at this point and I'm not using more than one interrupt in this case anyway, so it doesn't really matter how I set the priority. So now let's go ahead and stub out the the void. And the reason why I wanted to do this first is because this right here actually is part of the name of the function for the handler. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that without the n at the end. And these functions for interrupts have to start out with void because we're not returning anything. We wouldn't be able to know what's, what it's returning anyway, so we don't need to worry about that. And I'm going to put in the ex um, external interrupt 4 through 15, IRQ, and then handler at the end. And then we're not bringing anything into this, and just like the return, we wouldn't really have any access to put that put parameters in that I know of because the microcontroller handles going uh, calling this particular function when the interrupt is fired. Now let's get into the external interrupt specific control. How we control the way it interacts with the pin and how it picks up a signal. The first of these is the interrupt mask register. And we need to know which line, channel, or pin we're using. In this case, we're using pin number 15. And in this case, because it says zero is when line X is masked, we want the when the line X is not masked. So we want 15 not to be masked. masked. So let's go ahead and set the mask register bit number 15 to a 1. The next 
control we need to consider is the rising trigger selection register, where we determine the way we pick up a signal is on the rising edge. The way we set up the circuit, the pin is idling at zero volts. So it constantly sees zero volts until we press the button. And at that point, the signal looks like this. It's bouncing, and then it finally reaches its three volts. It's going to find every single rising edge that you're going to be able to give it. And when a button press happens, you'll notice that there is a rising edge here. There is a rising edge right here. There is a rising edge here. And there is a rising edge here. Different buttons with different mechanical properties may have different outcomes. But the buttons I'm using have pretty bad responses when it comes to bouncing. So you're going to see a lot of rising edges. It's going to, it's going to capture every single rising edge that it gives you. If you want to put a button, a push button, on a pin using an external interrupt, then you're going to have to figure out a way to determine a true button press. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and add the an external interrupt. Rising trigger selection register. And to enable it, we're just going to put a 1 in bit number 15 for that register. Another register that we may have to consider is the system configuration register that controls the external interrupt configuration. And in my experiments, I've noticed that this doesn't really have any effect at all. I've commented it out and uh, and ran it, commented or uncommented it, or invoked it, and the results are exactly the same. So I'm going to put it in anyway, just because it doesn't seem to harm it any. So the way you use it is they have the configuration for each port, but you need to specify which pin, and that is what position or bit position that you use the specific bits within those positions. And you have many choices. You actually have four choices for the external interrupt configuration. You have the one, which is from zero to three, two from four to seven, three, from 8 to 11, and the last one, number 4, is from 12 to 15. And we're going to be using number 15. And we specifically want the PA. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0 in those bits. So let's go ahead and configure that one right now. And you'll notice that there is an array of four positions here. So you can it's going to be from 0 to 3, and, and ours is going to be the fourth one. So it's 3 with an indexed, 0 indexed array. And we're going to select number 15 for PA. And the reason why it doesn't make a difference from my testing is because it's all zeros anyway. So it's going to be at the reset value. Now let's go to the, the function for the handler. This is where the microcontroller is going to take you when the interrupt fires. But you'll notice that it'll fire for all the lines between 4 and 15, all those channels or all those pins. So we need to determine which pin is being fired at the time. And the external interrupt pending register has that information. We are interested in the PR15. If we see a 1 in that bit, then the selected trigger request occurred, meaning that particular line has received a rising edge with the way we're controlling it in this particular program and circuit. 
So let's go ahead and test for that bit. If the 15th bit in the external interrupt pending register is true, then it found a rising edge. So now we've tested for the bit. And if it is true, we'll run this code. We have to reset this bit after we know that it has actually been fired. So to do that, we just do or put a one in that same bit. It seems odd to do this because it's already it already has a one in, in it because it wouldn't have gotten here unless it had a one. But according to the data sheet, the request is reset by writing a one in the pending register. The data sheet really isn't very clear about this and it took me quite a while to figure this out. But after doing some testing, if you don't actually add this line, as per the data sheet's recommendations, it really doesn't work. So it, this is actually needed. So in this particular case, I want to know if it's been fired or not. So I'm going to add another variable and it's going to be a counter. I'm going to use a volatile int because I want it not to be optimized out. And I'll call it port a pin 15 counter. And right in here, I'm just going to have an increment by one. So if it got to this location and it actually is the line number 15 has been fired, then the, this counter should count up. And I, did, I don't want to put anything else in this area because I don't want it to, to cause any delays. So I'm going to keep this very short. Just have this. I could just have a flag in here stating that a rising edge was found and then I can deal with it in the while loop but I just want to see a counter and that this is easy enough to put it right inside of the the interrupt function so in the while loop I'm going to display that counter on the LCD we'll send it to the LCD as an integer so everything should be good. Let me go ahead and build and let's see if everything is good. Looks like we have an error. Let's take a look. RTSR, it's probably not the way to spell it. Oh, I see, because I have an underscore here. Let's put a hyphen. Should work now. Build, build it again and see if we have any errors. No errors, so I'm going to go ahead and flash the marking controller and see what happens. The microcontroller has been flashed and you can see that we have the correct label A15 colon and it has a zero. Let's see what happens when we press the button. You can see a number two appeared three, four, then seven. So it is getting every rising edge whenever I press the button. And you can see that it is also picking up all the bouncing. Okay, so that is how to use the external interrupt to receive a digital signal from a pin. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching.